Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial where we're going to be looking at the basics of animation inside of Photoshop and Image Ready CS2. I'm going to start off here in Photoshop where I'm going to open a new document and I'll explain what's happening along the way. So under the file menu I'll select new and I'm going to set the document size to 500 by 500. Make sure that I've got a white background and then I'm going to name the document Animation. I'm going to hit OK once I've done that to create the document and I'm just going to position it so we can see it on the screen and that looks about, about right. Okay, now I'm going to do something that you couldn't do in Photoshop before version CS2 and that's go to the Windows menu and select the Animation Palette. And if you're using a version of Photoshop that doesn't have the Animation Palette then you can come over here to the bottom of the Tools Palette and select this little icon here which will jump you and whatever you had open on the screen to Image Ready. And if you haven't used Image Ready before then don't be deterred as it works in the same way as Photoshop. The one major difference being that everything here inside of Image Ready is geared towards web design. And you can see straight away that the new document we created inside of Photoshop has come along for the ride. But because we're in Image Ready we've gained these optimization tabs along the top of the document. And that's going to allow, allow us to optimize the image whilst we're working. OK, I'm going to stay in Image Ready to create the animation, but remember, if you're using CS2, then you can switch back into Photoshop. And by the way, you can switch between Image Ready and Photoshop at any time you like. You can even create a stack of layers in Photoshop and then switch to Image Ready to animate them. OK, let's press on. If your animation palette isn't open here inside of Image Ready, then you can open it by going up to the Windows menu and selecting Animation. I'm going to start off by creating a blinking animation here. So I'm going to grab the text tool and then select a nice heavy font, something like Impact will do. Then I'm going to insert the text into the page by clicking and then typing the name of the website that I'm currently hosting these tutorials on, freephotoshop.com. And then you can just adjust any of the parameters that you want, such as size and color. And I'm going to select the Move tool and then just position it into the center of the page, like so. OK, so we've created our normal state for our blinking text. But what we now need to do is create an active state. And by that I mean the appearance of the text while it's flashing. So I'm going to come down here to the Animation Palette and click the icon that looks like a new layer icon. And that's actually our Duplicate Current Frame button. So we now have two frames which is good because if you're hoping to animate something you need more than one frame but it's not working out at the moment because both of these frames are the same so if we press the play button nothing is going to happen inside our animation what we need to do is select frame 2 and change it and I'm going to do this by coming over here to the layers palette and right clicking the layer selecting layer style and outer glow and if you find the layer style option dimmed, then it will probably be because the background layer is currently selected and you can't add layer styles to a background layer. Easy way out of that one is just to change the name of the background layer to something else. OK, so I've got the Outer Glow Layer Style dialog box open here. I'm going to change the blend mode first of all to normal. And I'm going to select a gradient of say, uh, look down the list here, we're going to go with orange, yellow, orange. Then I'm going to take the spread value up to around about 30%. And then change the size to about 40 pixels. And I'm going to click OK to accept those changes. Next we need to set a couple of very important options down here in the animation palette. The first one being the number of times you want the animation to play. I'm going to leave the looping set to forever so it continuously loops. Next we need to set the delay time for each frame and the delay time of a frame is how long the frame displays before moving on to the next one. I'm going to set this to 0.2 seconds so each frame in our animation will display for a fifth of a second. 
By the way, if you want to change all the timings at once, you can simply select all the frames in the normal way, and then just change one of the selected values. OK, I'm going to hit the play button to start playing our animation, and depending on what kind of frame rate and quality you're watching this tutorial at, you may or may not be able to see the effect. I'm going to hit the stop button and we're done creating our first really basic animation and that's the key here, we've just used a, a, an extremely simple animation um, just for demonstration purposes and I'm going to get rid of all this white empty space in the document by going up to the image menu and selecting trim. I'm going to select top left pixel color and then make sure the trimming options are set for top, bottom, left and right and then click OK to trim the image down to size. Now I'm going to go ahead and optimize the image so I'm going to select the 2 up tab from the top of the document pane and that gives me a view of the original file in the upper pane and the optimized version in the lower pane. Then I'm going to bring over the optimized palette and if you can't see it on your screen, then it can be opened from the Windows menu, as always. Now, I'm not going to go into any of the details as to how you can optimise the image. We'll leave that for another tutorial, I think. But suffice to say that the only format you can save animation into is the Flash file format or the GIF file format. Now, if you want to save into the Flash file format, then you'll need to go up to the File menu, select Export, and then choose the flash option from there. And that's only available in image ready by the way. Can't be done inside of Photoshop CS2. Anyway, we're going to save this image as a GIF file as I said. So make sure the GIF option is selected in the optimized palette. And I'm going to select a color table of 32 colors. I'm going to leave the other options as they are. And then just go up to the file menu and select save optimized as. I'm going to go ahead and save the file onto the desktop. Now I'm going to open Windows Explorer and navigate to the desktop and open up the image I've created. And I'll just resize it so we can see it on the screen. And there we go. Well, I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.